Hey you guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna be fixing something on the interior of my car which has been driving me crazy pretty much since the first day I bought it. Let's go check it out. Hey guys, so what is it? What's inside the car which has been driving me crazy ever since I bought it a couple of years ago? Well, let me show you. It is this. The uh, AC controls on the center console in a lot of 997s get rubbed up and uh, the black coloring comes off and uh, it just looks like an absolute mess. And unfortunately, my 997 is one of those which has the problem. Um, now the job's a little fiddly. Um, it requires taking out a couple of pieces of the interior trim and uh, you all know that I'm always very nervous. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I'm very nervous of playing around with the interior of the car. Um, a, it's sort of the sand beige color. So uh, it's very unforgiving in terms of like nicks and scratches. Uh, and B, because well, I'm a little bit clumsy. <laughs> so um, it's one of those jobs where I've been thinking about it the whole time I've had the 997. Um, I ordered the parts, these, these, these arrived um, a few days ago. Well, no, um, these arrived like two months ago, a few months ago, and I haven't done the job yet, um, but I'm gonna attempt it today. So uh, let's go check out the interior of the car, and uh, I hope everybody is crossing their fingers and toes and legs for me, because uh, I really want this job to go well. All right, let's go check out the interior of the car. So here are the culprits. Um, on the left, we've got the temperature control, which goes up and down. Um, that one's not too bad, but the um, it's already started to chip. Um, it's this one on the right-hand side, the actual fan speed itself. This one um, is really badly worn. So I'm gonna be replacing these two today. Now, in order to do the job, I've gotta take off the two side uh, trim panels. Um, which if you watch Michael Bath, you'll see that he attempted and was very successful in doing recently. Um, there are a bunch of other videos online uh, that show you how to do it. Um, just a couple of uh, screws here and there to take off. I need a, a T20 and a T25 um, Torx. And then I also need um, a couple of Allen wrenches, I believe. Um, and a Phillips, I also believe, um, but we'll find out. So I'm gonna take off the two uh, trim panels on the side. Uh, then I'm gonna remove the AC panel itself, flip it over, um, and then I take out the, um, the switches and replace the switches. It's a little bit of a fiddly job. Um, in my 996, I managed to replace the LCD screen um, quite successfully. Um, so I'm hoping that I can sort of replicate my success today. Um, so I'm gonna do the two switches. The other thing I'm gonna try and do, if it's not too difficult, is replace this uh, trim panel around my Sony head unit here. Um, this is my sort of, the well, this is the, the head unit's last life, basically. I've got the correct color, which goes um, with the rest of the trim here. Uh, if I don't like how it looks after that, then it's game over and I'm going back to my stock PCM unit. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can do that as well. But at the very least, I wanna try and, um, uh, try and replace these two screwed up uh, switches here. Okay, so what do I need to do the job? Um, there's a company online called Climber Repair. Um, I believe they're in the UK and they sell these online. Um, I can't remember the exact price, but I'll, I'll try and remember to put it in the video. They weren't cheap, um, but apparently they're supposed to last very long. You know, they're, they're supposed to last a long time. So um, Climber Repair in the UK. And then over here, uh, Metra is the name of the company. And this piece here, um, matches the interior color of my trim perfectly. We've got some instructions here. Now, there is a Metra 
um, the, the, the black piece in the car already, that's Metra. So I'm guessing I don't need to use um, the rest of the parts here. There are a couple of plates here that go on the side of the head unit and, and keep this all together. I'm hoping it's just a straight swap. Um, so we'll see. If it starts to look dicey, I'm gonna go back to Geek Squad in Richfield and uh, get the guys to do it for me. Quick look at the tools you need to be using for this job. Um, you need a small wrench um, or an impact driver. Um, there is one T25 uh, screw and two uh, T20s. So you need a couple of sockets, T20 and T25. Um, and that's all you need to get the two side panels off and to get the, uh, the AC unit out. And then for the, uh, then for the, uh, the, the, the dismantling the AC unit itself, again, very simple. Um, get yourself a, a microfiber towel or some other uh, soft surface to put the unit down on so you're not gonna scratch it up more. Um, you need a T6 uh, screwdriver uh, to, take the, um, to take all of the screws out. There are four on the plastic housing and then nine on the circuit board. Um, I've used this uh, blue masking tape to keep the LCD screen in place. Um, and then you need a pair of tweezers like this guy um, to help take uh, the, two, uh, the two switches, uh, the two buttons out. And, and that's it, that's all you need for the job. Okay, in the middle of the carpet here, um, there should be one screw hidden away. Let's see if I can find it. And it's not the T, it's the T25, I think. Yep. Ha <laughs> ha <laughs> Out it comes. Oh, a little more. Okay, so there's the carpet off, and I suppose I could deconnect the cigarette lighter. So that was pretty easy. Okay, next up, got a couple of screws here for the trim piece on the side. I believe these are the other one. So these might be the T20s. Yep, T20. Oh. There's one. There's the second. Okay, so I can now feel the center trim console is loose, so I'm now gonna try and take it off. Now this is where things can go a little wrong. Um, to get this side panel out, now I've taken the screws out, um, it's relatively easy to take, there are like one, two, I think three um, trim clips. And it's pretty easy to break this one on top. Um, and when you put it back on, if it's broken, it might be prone to rattling. So the idea is to pull it out as straight as possible um, and almost coming up slightly at an angle from what I've seen online. Uh, so let me see if I can, uh, let me see if I can do that without doing any damage. So as it happens, um, the top trim clip seems to have been broken already, uh, maybe by um, the previous owner or the folks that put in this uh, double DIN unit for me. Um, but once I pulled out the, um, the, 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 the trim piece towards the bottom, um, the top piece just kind of fell loose. So I've got a feeling that was broken previously. All right, let's try the exact same procedure now for uh, the other side. All right, let's now try this trim panel. Yep, 
Easy. Trim clips intact. No, actually, there you go. The top trim clip here as well is broken. And given how easy it was to take off, I suspect that was broken um, when the head unit was replaced. Well, if that is true, then uh, it's not too big a deal because I've never heard any rattling coming from uh, the center console. Anyway, it is what it is. Um, two, uh, sorry, three screws in total from either side. Um, trim clip is back. Sorry, the trim pieces are now pulled off. Now it's time to take out the, uh, the AC unit. So now we're at this stage, removing the AC unit should be relatively straightforward. Um, I'm gonna try and get a view around here, but just on the inside, um, there are a couple of spring buttons to push. Uh, here we go, right here. Let me just see if I can get a decent angle. So I'm gonna push one on this side and then one on the other. And in theory, the AC unit should just pull straight out um, and I should be able to uh, disconnect the wiring harness at the back. So let me just see if I can give you guys a, uh, a better view there. So that was relatively easy. Um, yeah, just you know, pushing the clips and out, out the back it comes. Now uh, I just need to disconnect the wiring here. And remember where it goes. <laughs> Black on the right. Red in the middle. And it should come straight out. So that's the first part of the job done. AC unit is out. And I've got to say, for anybody thinking about doing this job themselves, um, the hardest part was just working sort of on a hard floor on your knees. So uh, I pinched um, a patio uh, a chair cushion there to kneel on, um, and it was fine. Um, the, 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 the first screw uh, out, of the, um, out of the carpet, super easy to take out, and then the other two screws, of course, easy. Um, the, the little uh, spring um, buttons to pull out the AC, again, easy, disconnecting, super fine. Um, so now we start to get onto the fiddlier part of the job, um, which is taking the AC unit apart um, and then actually swapping out the switches. So let's get straight to that. So this is where the fun and games begin. Um, I have a T6 screwdriver and there are one, two, three, four screws to remove. Um, there are another two here on the back of the fan. I don't think I need to remove that, um, but let's just start with these four screws and we'll take it from there. So that was just it, the four screws. Um, and I've put them over here in a safe place so uh, they're not gonna run away. And let me just check. Yeah, it's the same size, it's the same uh, screwdriver. So uh, just looking here, I can see one behind here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws. So I'm gonna take my first pile of screws and put them over there. And I've now got nine to remove. The other thing I'm gonna do now that uh, I've got the front off is I'm gonna put the whole unit itself on something soft, because I don't wanna be uh, scraping and damaging it as I work. You know, the rest of it's still in really good condition. So, all right, let's take these nine screws out. Okay, so, so there are the nine screws. Hopefully now I can take off the motherboard. But before I do that, I'm just gonna see if there's anything special or in particular that I, I sort of wanna capture so that it goes back together. So um, I can see that the circuit board is slightly bigger at the top as I look at it. So uh, that's how I'm gonna put it back into place. And of course, there's the back of the fan here, so it can really only go back in one place. Okay. 
And I can see actually that here um, is a rubber seal which sits across a number of um, a number of hubs, I guess you could call them, or I guess this is where the buttons are. Um, but this clearly needs to be kept in the same place. So I'm going to try and store this for the next 20 minutes. Or so while I'm working on this, as is in the right place, and I can see that all of these plastic pieces go back together once I put it in. So that might be a, a little bit of a fiddly job to get it back together, but at least I'm I'm keeping it knowing that it's in the right place. Okay, so now I have to remove these two buttons. And now that the plastic's off the back, um, they're actually all pretty loose. Uh, I don't want any of the other buttons to fall out, of course. I'm gonna try and be super gentle. Um, there is a great video online um, by Climber Repair, uh, the company that produced the buttons to show you how to take out each button. Okay, guys, this is where it starts to get super tricky. Um, first off, I've used some black masking tape here to just keep the buttons and the LCD screen all in one place. Now, the website Climber Repair suggested that I could use, or actually showed me, that I could use two small flat-headed screwdrivers to go either side here of the white plastic to push the black plastic clips that hold the button in out slightly. Um, but I can't get them to go in, and when I put them in and I start to work on the plunger here, they fall out. So I'm gonna try a slightly different method. I've got a large pair of tweezers um, from an electronic toolkit, um, and they seem to go in okay. So I've got the button pushed up all the way, and now I'm gonna put the tweezers in. And that seems to be doing the same job. And now they're holding in without falling out. Now I'm gonna use my torque screwdriver to push the bottom plunger. Let's see if that'll go. Yeah. So you can see the buttons there slightly proud. Oops. The button there is slightly um, proud from the front. I'm now gonna turn it around and try and do the same. I'm um, pushing the button down slightly so that you can see it's just over the edge. Um, and now I'm gonna try and push this plunger down as well. And there we have it. The button's coming out. The old button's coming out and the two plungers um, are also supposed to come out. So I'm gonna take my tweezers out. You see here the two plungers and the uh, they have a slight ridge in the middle, but essentially, um, you know, they're both the same on each side. So they're gonna go back in there once I put the new button in. So now we're gonna repeat the process um, for the other side. And I've gotta say, I think I should copyright or patent this method because it works, seems to work a, a hell of a lot easier than those two little screwdrivers. So on the other side, um, all right, uh, button is up. Buttons up to the top, um, which is where I'm going to push first. I'm going to put my tweezers in. Okay, tweezers are in. Keep my plunger in the old button to one side. I'm now going to push um, the plunger down again. Oh, I'm sorry. The button's all the way up to the top, which means I've got to push on the plunger at the bottom. And that is not coming. I wonder, I might not have had the tweezers in the right place, so let's do that again. Okay, tweezers down, button up to the top. Yeah, well, that's a lot easier. Um, so the button again now is proud. I'm gonna slide it forward. I'm gonna try and slide it forward. Yeah, there we go. Slide it forward and now push on the second plunger. And there we have it. The next button is out. Now, let me just show you um, if you can see this. Inside the holes there, can you see that there's a 
a little piece of plastic on each side of the hole. Well, that sort of corresponds to the inside of the plunger um, where there's a groove on one side, but not the other. So presumably I've got to put it back the same way. So there we have my two plungers and my two ratty old buttons. Okay guys, now it's time to reassemble. So uh, don't forget, uh, temperature's on the left, uh, the fan speed is on the right. Um, we have our plungers to put back in and they can only go in one way. They are slightly thinner on one side. Oops, they can only go in one way. They're slightly thinner on one end and slightly wider on the other. Plus there's a little groove along the middle. So as we look at um, the unit here, you can see there's a little groove there, a little groove there. And because they came out forwards, so we pushed from the back and they came out forwards, the thin side has to go in first, I guess. So I'm gonna put one plunger in here and one plunger in the bottom. And now I'm gonna push the button back in. Um, and I'm gonna put one side in first and then the bottom, there we go, it's in. And it looks pretty good. It looks a lot better than the old temperature button. Now let's put in um, the other side. So again, uh, I've got the plunger, the slightly smaller end goes in first, the grooves um, face to the middle, one plunger in. Second plunger, slightly smaller at one end. Oops, nearly dropped it. And then the, the fan switch. And again, I'm gonna go in one side first at the top, push it in, and then there we go. That's it. Now we just gotta reassemble it. Wow, I mean, just what a difference. And apparently um, the material that they use to make these buttons, you can tell the finish is ever so slightly different, um, but it's not plastic with rubberized um, trim on top. I mean, look, look at that. I'm scraping with my fingernail and it's coming off. I mean, that's just poor design. Um, but this uh, plastic is supposed to be a lot more hard wearing. It's black plastic and it's, uh, it's not gonna come off. So let's put the motherboard back on, or the, sorry, the circuit board. Um, I need to take off the tape, of course, on the back and then we'll get it back inside the car. Okay, so now I've got to reassemble it and I'm gonna try very careful not to have the LCD screen fall out. <laughs> So now I've got to reinsert the screws, you know, put the screws back in and, uh, and then put the whole unit back together. So there we have it, it's all back in place. Um, the buttons still appear to be clicking, <laughs> which I guess is good. We're gonna make sure they work. Um, the switches uh, for, the, um, for the fan and the temperature seem to go up and down just fine. Let's go get it back in the car and make sure it's working. All right, so uh, yeah, let's put it back in, same as before. Uh, I'm gonna put the, um, the red wiring harness in the middle, the black wiring harness on the right-hand side. Um, they only go into two spots because of the size, so uh, relatively foolproof. Um, and then these little clips on either side of the AC unit are gonna take care of holding it in place. Uh, so it should be super straightforward. moment of truth before I put everything back together again let's just uh, see if it works the fan is working 
up and down, that's good. Oh, off. Okay, so the fan is working. Temperature is working. My fans need <laughs> fixing, I guess. Can you hear that noise? All right, so there's the fan speed, and then... Yeah, the buttons. Oh, I guess I need to turn the fan on. Everything seems to be working okay. Well guys, thanks for watching this video. Um, one of two jobs uh, successful, um, having just taken a look at the trim around the, uh, the new head unit, um, I really am not sure what I'm doing. And uh, there, I think there are a couple of uh, screws there that if I loosen, it'll come out, but uh, I'm gonna take that into an expert or at least uh, do some more research before I have a go. But I am super excited that I finally got the, uh, the two AC buttons fixed because that scratched up look has been driving me crazy um, since I bought the 997 about two years ago. Um, I hope you found this video useful. Um, please like and, sus and uh, subscribe if you, uh, if you like the video. Uh, more coming soon. I'm gonna try and get my Fister exhaust mufflers on uh, later this week. Uh, fingers crossed, that's gonna be a fun video to make. Uh, and more drone flight training, of course, getting ready for the tail of the dragon. Um, but this is a really, really enjoyable video to make and uh, I hope you like it. So uh, catch you in the next video. See ya, bye.